So um, thank you for having me here. Uh, and um, I'll, um, so we'll be I'll be uh, discussing uh, to our uh, development of uh, digit heating uh, reactor project at uh, VTT Technical Research Center of Finland, and uh, well, also in a bit more general terms. So. Uh, uh, as the motivation on why. So uh, VTT is a uh, uh, center for technology uh, or applied technology at uh, Finland. Uh, and uh, I work there as a research team leader for a um, reactor analysis team. Um, and we have been uh, having SMR studies for s some years, but uh, this uh, now focuses on uh, the DC heating reactor. So uh, contents of the presentation. Uh, first, some uh, motivation. Why nuclear DC heating reactor? Uh, actually, uh, my colleague uh, Eric Anus from CEA uh, yesterday already gave uh, to you much of the motivation, but uh, some uh, repetition is never uh, a problem. Uh, and then some background on uh, why and uh, our thoughts on why we started some uh, internal reactor design projects on our own and also a presentation on the heat module concept and some preliminary analysis that we have performed. Uh, this is a uh, work that has been performed and supported by a large number of our researchers. And this is uh, just a high level technical, uh, high level uh, presentation. More detailed technical presentations are given at the next ICONE conference this August, where we have several papers on this design. Okay, but initially, why we are actually talking about uh, DC heating reactor. So, uh, not to go just to Finland, but for, for instance, for Europe as a whole, uh, there are huge number of uh, DC heating networks, especially in the uh, like central, Eastern Central Europe, which are uh, powered at the moment by uh, coal and gas, something that uh, cannot basically last for uh, past few decades. Uh, Eric uh, uh, from CEA yesterday presented also his graph on uh, amount of uh, DC heating and fraction of renewable energy, commenting how in Finland and in Sweden, actually much of the uh, heat supplies from renewable energy. And uh, I don't know actually the situation or discussion in Sweden, but in Finland we have notice that especially for the large cities, this renewable energy comes from burning biomass, which might not be uh, all that sustainable, especially if you need to import it from uh, uh, abroad. So while it might be okay for uh, smaller uh, networks, some larger networks, even uh, just a blanket statement of renewable energy might not be a good thing as the feedstock is limited. But basically there is a huge need for uh, cleaning up heat supply in Europe and also in other countries. So um, also with the advent of our uh, implementation of uh, wind and solar power, we are seeing more and more also these uh, combined heat and power plants, which are retired. And uh, we are looking at more and more of heat only plants for the heating and then for electricity, looking at interconnections and uh, uh, wind and solar, and of course, nuclear. Uh, but uh, for uh, DC heating supply, electrification might not be as simple as it will uh, create large demands on uh, uh, electricity uh, in times when, for instance, sun won't shine and there might be a, a longer pauses in wind generation. So uh, basically having uh, the, uh, uh, some kind of uh, dispatchable heat generation would 
fit in to the current infrastructure. And as I said, there might be a limited stocks of sustainable biomass, sustainable waste that, that could be burned. So a nuclear diesel heating uh, reactor might be one of the uh, good options. However, uh, currently there are no nuclear diesel heating SMRs being uh, in late stages of development, which would be in a size range well suited for like European mid-sized uh, towns. I guess we'll be hearing next from the Chinese projects and they are ongoing, but uh, usually they target large cities uh, with uh, like, for instance, 400 megawatt plants. Uh, anyway, idea in itself, it's not a new one. For instance, uh, for uh, <laughs> you, you probably know Ogesta Verket in uh, Stockholm, Ogesta, uh, which uh, produced DC heating in the 60s, 70s. There is also, there was uh, originally uh, VTT's own uh, DC heating reactor design, to, which was uh, worked on in uh, 70s. It, well, uh, there was a conceptual design of heat only reactor, which would be mostly manufactured in Finland. And they actually performed also economic analysis and came up with this kind of uh, result that uh, this kind of DC heating reactor would be economical in cities that were like 100 kilometer from the uh, peat box. So basically if there would be peat next to a city, they could use it for the heating, but other, otherwise nuclear diesel heating would be a very great thing. Uh, actually, the people who worked on this uh, VTT's heat reactor design 10 uh, were coming also to Sweden uh, to work on this ASEA Atom Secure diesel heating reactor in late 70s, early 80s, which was actually offered in Hels to Helsinki, but other competing solutions at the time won, so we built natural gas uh, CHP plants in Helsinki for DC heating. But time has flown. We have uh, uh, more and more uh, concerned about uh, climate change. So maybe time would be right now. At least in Finland, there's uh, lots of interest and discussion on pro uh, basically using nuclear energy for also heat production. So, like I said, there's interest in Finland on uh, nuclear DC heating. We did quite a lot of like reviews and works and current uh, designs of SMRs in general do not either target DC heating, might be high temperature reactors or then, uh, well, electricity production, of course, or then a very large DC heating projects, which would not actually fit in, uh, for instance, mid-sized Finnish town or mid-sized uh, Central European town for them itself. So we also started uh, uh, this kind of like design process of our own just to show what it would look like and how we could actually think or, uh, of uh, this kind of uh, nuclear diesel heating uh, system or plant. What, are, what, what would be the demands? Uh, and this is important since uh, currently the whole concept of SMR is very wide and uh, we are in Finland having now legislation renewal on uh, nuclear energy, which would target also the heat use of uh, potential SMRs. So we also need to provide some insight what kind of uh, reactor we would be talking about. So this uh, internal project was started in last February. Call was to create the preconceptual design of a small nuclear reactor module for DC heating application. Uh, we chose a thermal power of 50 megawatts based on what kind of uh, this kind of uh, plant would be seen as a suitable for uh, this kind of mid-size town concept. And basically the idea was to have module and several module could be put in one plant. Supply temperature high enough for the most of the year for the peak uh, demand supply uh, would be 
provided anyway by other dedicated plants with uh, smaller capital costs. And uh, they must have a pre-conceptual design by the end of 2020. So basically when looking at this, of course, there's a wide variety of different technologies, uh, but uh, we started looking as uh, as bare bones as possible. So based on existing technology, no unconventional features, materials, or manufacturing techniques. Uh, the design was to be done using VTT's in-house computational codes and uh, basically no uh, very novel concepts that would require new expertise uh, required from, uh, to, uh, of the regulator. Of course, apart from the fact that these would be uh, situated quite close to cities and uh, uh, for instance, and this uh, of course brings up new issues. And also something that would be compatible with the Finnish final disposal concept as our final disposal uh, project is uh, very far advanced. Uh, so uh, this kind of like uh, uh, cho cho choosing, uh, choosing existing technology would mitigate future technology risks related to later stages of project. Also, we would need to be able to demonstrate high level of safety achieved without complicated active multiple redundant systems and uh, very simple operating principle was looked after. For instance, because uh, this concept would also be need to be justified by the, to the local people. And if saying that, okay, we have very much redundant uh, supply of active things that uh, it might be very difficult to comp uh, communicate. So basically try aiming to rely on passive systems uh, uh, might be able to also simplify and making the safety easier to communicate. This is one, one of the things that uh, was uh, in, uh, intended also for selling this project is to be able to create business opportunities for Finnish industries as the low, low power, low temperature, low pressure uh, would aim to have a, uh, uh, enable to, uh, for a, uh, easier manufacturing of uh, key components. Of course, fuel is something that's uh, very regulated and it's something that's going to come from the existing vendors. But otherwise, how much could we do in Finland? What kind of uh, technology? We, we have uh, uh, manufacturing companies doing uh, high quality work in other fields. And of course, in parallel, there was lots of in-house uh, uh, tools and competence development as we were like putting into use our uh, new tool set we had been developing for uh, safety assessments. So basically what we have been working on is uh, design rather similar for our, uh, what uh, Eric Hanus was showing for CES design yesterday. Uh, basically uh, reactor separated from a heating reactor by the intermediate circuit, uh, primary circuit with uh, components integrated inside the pressure vessel and aiming for uh, natural circulation from the reactor core to heat exchanges. Operating pressure actually relatively low uh, with self pressurizing with the nitrogen bub bubble into pressure uh, riser, which would be pressurizing the reactor when the power is uh, lifted with uh, core output temperature for 120 uh, degrees, but scalable and basically yielding uh, 90 or so to output temperature for the DC heating network, which is sufficient for uh, actually most of the year, at least in Finnish context. This of course is heavily dependent on a network. So this is something that can be scaled. This is just a reference early. Uh, Basically, uh, with these kind of reactors that would be put in uh, like uh, smaller cities without no own electricity generation, station blackout is something that we were quite worried about. So we wanted to have a system that's uh, uh, capable of uh, basically without any moving parts to 
be able to withstand uh, like basically station blackout and then just like recovering from it. So uh, basically there's a double shell containment in worst, uh, immersed in water pool with uh, intermediate space like uh, to, uh, here, uh, uh, intermediate space filled with uh, water partially. So basically when the decay heat removal is based on natural circulation in the sense that in the normal operation the, the downcomer uh, water is uh, below boiling temperature of uh, uh, the intermediate uh, water liquid. But if there's any uh, like um, any disturbance, for instance, uh, uh, in heat removal, the downcomer water temperature will rise and cause the intermediate, spa uh, intermediate space water to boil, which will then uh, uh, be, uh, create a very efficient uh, heat transfer towards uh, the pool. So uh, we are now aiming to uh, uh, we did uh, <coughs> some deterministic analysis to demonstrate the basic functioning of the concept and decay heat, heat, uh, that decay heat system was uh, done with the uh, CFD calculation. Basic behavior of the module with uh, our system codes and the reactor core design with uh, new, uh, uh, our new calculation uh, system uh, Kraken, which uses, for instance, Serpent Monte Carlo code for reactor physics, uh, thermohydraulics co uh, codes for uh, uh, thermohydraulics, and basically uh, lumps all of these calculations together. Reactor in itself is a very conventional uh, PVR. One of the chosen approaches was to use just truncated commercial app assemblies, uh, but uh, this of course is not optimized for uh, uh, this kind of desiccating uh, reactors temperatures. However, we were able to demonstrate negative feedback coefficients through the throughout the cycle, uh, sufficient shutdown margins, exclusion of fast reactor activity transients and quite flat power profile, even with uh, like, let's say non-optimized uh, bundle type. Structural materials uh, in our preliminary work we uh, used the design reference uh, requirement for anything uh, uh, for the disk heating networks, which is in Finland 16 bars of pressure. Uh, while in the accident analysis performed, the primary circuit pressure stays below six bars. So uh, there is uh, water all around. So basically, perhaps austenic steel could be used and uh, based on just the uh, pressure equi equipment directive standards that required wall thickness would be approximately 18, 18 millimeters compared to like a large light water reactor where it's uh, 10 times that. So uh, basically this might be easier to manufacture even if we would need uh, probably need to enlarge to, uh, or increase the thickness. Of course, austenic steel is susceptible to irradiation assisted st stress corrosion cracking at low temperatures. However, uh, the fluence to the load bearing structure should stay very low. And as a last thing, uh, basically just uh, to demonstrate uh, how this kind of like a passive heat transfer system works. So basically here is a station blackout uh, and on the left hand side there is a core outlet temperature uh, and the axis is time so this is uh, evolution of one week so basically at time zero everything uh, just uh, uh, stops all the function functional systems uh, or function active systems pumps uh, at all stop so uh, and there is no heat transfer through the uh, to the secondary circuit first the temperature goes up but when this uh, intermediate uh, uh, water starts to boil the uh, core outlet uh, temperature starts to go down and down also the pressure uh, increases and goes down with the uh, temperature. 
basically the containment liquid temperature uh, is shown here going a bit over the bo boiling temperature it uh, basically transfers all the excess heat through boiling until there's not uh, so much decay heat so there uh, it goes to the pool just by conduction and of course depending on the pool measurement uh, uh, pool dimensions uh, we are uh, seeing some uh, uh, increase in the temperature, but we are just not uh, assuming uh, any uh, at this point, uh, just that uh, for uh, simply fit city, no uh, exit from uh, or no, no uh, temperature uh, extraction from the pool. Just to demonstrate that, okay, we can have weeks of time before anything bad happens. So to conclude, decarbonizing DC heating supply is a big challenge for the future uh, next uh, uh, decades. Nuclear DC heating reactors, one potential alternative. Uh, our design work was initiated last year, uh, aiming for a proof of concept type design, demonstrating a low temperature reactor intended for DC heat production in mid-size town. And also we uh, used this to demonstrate and test our in-house simulation framework in parallel and to provide some uh, uh, interesting work for our young scientists. I think at this point, uh, the proof of concept was that there could be this kind of design with uh, well-established technologies uh, and materials. And uh, basically this low temperature and pressure enable simpler and lighter solutions. So, but this is uh, on our uh, current state of the DC heating work. In parallel, we have the Finnish SMR ecosystem creation project, EcoSMR. Uh, please also check the EcoSMR web pages on, uh, especially we have an open business day coming in a couple months uh, with uh, free registration, where there is uh, lots of uh, discussion on a Finnish and European context of SMRs also. So thank you.